it does kind of look cool. It kind of looks sort of like Neo Tokyo, you know what I mean? Like it has that futuristic, flashy look to it. It's a little bit better looking than their previous ones, but realistically speaking, I've always really liked the Alienware machines because of their phenomenal performance. Not so much all the flashy tech stuff. I don't really care so much about that. This is the Alienware X17. So what makes this device special is its cooling and the fact that it's got the same form factor as ultrabook based laptop. So it's extremely thin, but you're getting the performance like a thick laptop. And that's because you got these giant exhausts on the back, these ones right here. And you also have a giant exhaust on the side. On both sides, I mean, it literally is like about half of the length of the machine on the side. That is crazy. You've never seen cooling like this before. I mean, look at it. Absolutely amazing. On top of that, all the airflow is actually designed to go through all of the chips. Take a look. You flip it over. Actually, these are intake. So the air goes in through here and then it travels through all the components, cools the components, and then it comes out from the sides. So it's like in and out, which kind of hasn't really been done before. It's quite impressive. Over here we have the GPU die. The CPU die tends to be a little bit smaller. We're sharing heat pipes and fans. It's a combined cooling system. Both the CPU and GPU are sharing the cooling system. The CPU isn't getting as hot. The GPU can essentially borrow its fans on the CPU and, and the heat pipes and all that. And I guess it keeps it cooler that way. As for the speakers, I've tested them. They do not sound very good. 87 watt hour battery. Would have been nice if this was 99. I mean, this is this Alienware we're talking about. We want maximum performance, maximum everything. You also have a really strong and sturdy metal body. This back panel here is actually pretty thick. It's made from magnesium. Not like the kind of metal you see in Ultrabooks. You know, it's nice that it's metal, but it's too thin. No, this bad boy right here, this is actually pretty sturdy. Now I had wished that they made this also all metal. It's basically plastic, so if you drop it, it's gonna shatter. So in essence, about half of the machine is plastic and the other half is metal. Be nice if it was all metal, but it's not, unfortunate. However, the materials that they chose are nice to the touch. So when you touch it, it's like a cold plastic. So it actually feels good. A lot of the things about this machine, when you, when you touch it, it feels good. It feels like premium quality. And when you try to like push anywhere, it's extremely solid. I mean, this thing feels like it's made from stone or rock or something. Um, this back panel right here is also that magnesium metal. So it's really, really strong. Now the styling, Alienware has kind of held on to this certain type of style for a while. Um, and I think it's, I don't think it's bad. I think it looks pretty good. It could look better. The hinge for the machine, super fluid, super sturdy. It's not going anywhere. You can open up the machine with one hand. Absolutely love that. I mean, more machines need to be like that. The other thing is the fingerprints. Yes, this also has problems with fingerprints. Port-wise, you have a Thunderbolt, USB-A, Ethernet, USB-C with DisplayPort built in and power delivery, HDMI, USB-A, micro SD card slot, and DisplayPort. They also have a power plug on the back.
the keyboard and trackpad. Trackpad's decent, it's acceptable. You won't find too many complaints. Some people might complain that it's too small, but I think it's good enough. And if you're not big on trackpads, then it's really not gonna matter. But if you're coming from a machine like the MacBook or the Razer Blade Pro 17 or 15, this might feel a little bit worse. And it's also not double hinged, which kind of sucks. So you click here, there's no, there's no click. You only get a click here, no click there. Keyboard, definitely one of the best we've used. I'd say it's a little bit better than the Razer Blade. Alienware has always had very good keys. Like the keys have kind of like a nice soft feel to them on the top and they're kind of crunchy. They're kind of mechanical, which is really nice. And if you click on the sides, they still click. So you don't get, you don't get a mushiness to the keys. You get actually a pretty nice solid keyboard, which I like. It's nice that they glow but they don't really glow on the secondary key. As you can see there, it's just dark. So at nighttime, when you're looking for, like let's say the turbo button, you have to just remember that it's F1. Or if you're looking for the brightness keys, they're actually kind of hard to see. When you're trying to plug something in at night, the strip actually blinds you. It blinds you from being able to see the ports. One way around that that I found is you can put your hand. Your hand can act as a little reflector to help you see the ports. You see? There's one way to do it. It's a little bit odd that you have to do that. It would have probably made more sense for each of the ports to have some kind of, you know, RGB inside, kind of like what Razer Blade did on some of their machines where like their USB ports are glowing. It would have been nice to have a little, little light in there, but instead they focus on creating this, this flashy look so everybody can know that you have an Alienware, you know? I mean, it's kind of cool. It's cool that they have this whole branding thing, but it should just be more practical. They gotta stop getting it, stop trying to make it look so flashy and just make it look practical. All right, let's go ahead and turn it on. You get this Alienware head button, which is kind of cool. It can be also customized to be any color that you want. I find it kind of interesting. There it goes. First time you turn it on, you get this colorful, wave-like pattern, which is kind of interesting. So I've actually set all the colors to be red, but you can set them to be anything you want. Um, the alien head, I just left it default. It kind of changes colors. Like it has like a rainbowy pattern, which is all right. And also on the back, I tried to change it to red and it, it looks a little bit more pinkish, I would say. Also another alien red head right there as well. My question for you guys is, do you want a quieter machine or do you want better performance or do you want it to be cooled better? What's more important for you? Me personally, I think that the Alienware Area 51M, it gives you all of that. For some reason, people just aren't buying the machine. But yeah, leave a comment down below what's most important for you. You're definitely getting your money's worth with this processor when you're compiling or doing any kind of work. All eight of those cores are running at about four gigahertz. That's pretty impressive. But when it comes to the RTX 3070, you're really only getting maybe 70 or 60% of what that 3070 is capable of, which is a pretty big shame. Like, it would be really nice if you could just get the full GPU in the laptop. Why not? It's been done before, especially with Alienware's previous machines. Now in terms of performance, this is the RTX 3070 machine. It's got the i7 processor, the 11800H, which is a phenomenal processor. And both of these, CPU and GPU, are powered very well. And they also are cooled very well. So you're gonna get some of the best performance in the industry. I'll power this bad boy on and take a look. I have my performance monitors running and honestly I think this is a much better gaming experience than Razer Blade. Like with the Razer Blade, yes, you get a quiet machine, yes, you get a thin machine, but with the Alienware you can still get a thin machine, but unfortunately it'll be just a little bit louder, but your performance is gonna be better. So I have MSI Afterburner running. I'm gonna play some games. There's some things to pay attention to. So like this right here, this shows the wattage. This RTX 3070, this is a 145 watt variant. And right now I'm I'm still loading in, I'm still spawning up all this stuff, but you're gonna see that it goes up to 100 watts, 120 watts, sometimes it'll go up to 145 watts. Now the thing is, even though the cooling on here is better, right, it will still not be enough to get 
all the good performance out of this 11th gen or the RTX 3070, right? So the cooling needs to be even better. Right now we're having a problem where machines, they're just too thin. They're way too thin. They're not gonna be able to ever really take advantage of the RTX 3070 because they're just too thin and they just, they can't seem to cool the machines properly. Now this Alienware is one of the best out there in terms of cooling it and performance, but it's still, in my opinion, not enough because look i'm at 110 watts 122 watts and i do see it go up to 140 watts 145 even but rarely it needs to stay up there much longer so i normally join the server with the most population and either weekly or monthly wipe all right so here i am in the game and i uh, have my little tower built here hello sir how's it going man ah, my stupid mic's not working all right, so I'm like almost at the highest point. Oh, being shot at. Ow, this guy is not a nice guy. 119 watts. It jumped up to like 120. Still not as good as I'd like it to be. Even though this power brick is a 240 watt power brick. Now my guess is that it's not gonna shoot up because it's just trying to save power. Right, but I also know that they're power limit throttling because the temperatures are actually cool, right? 75 Celsius, 80 Celsius, 73 Celsius. That is surprisingly cool. Most gaming machines are gaming at like 90 Celsius or 100 Celsius or 99 Celsius. Like on a lot of like the machines like MSI, GF65 or GE Raider. On those machines, like it's just getting super hot, right? But at least on this Alienware, it's gonna stay relatively cool, which I actually like that quite a bit. All right, let's try a little flare thermal imaging and I'll show you the hot spots. So here we are. And it looks like it's mostly in an area where you're not gonna put your hand, which is nice. On some gaming machines, you have it get like super hot where you have your hand. And that is kind of ridiculous in my opinion because you're really not supposed to be able to feel the heat. Like they should insulate it to the point where you do not have to worry about it. And then obviously you have the, some heat being shot out from the sides here. That's what that looks like surprisingly hot a jet engine just shooting out and in terms of sound 52 yeah about 52 decibels so I think it could be a little bit quieter but they did optimize for temperatures that low I've never seen them be that low in a gaming laptop before that's quite impressive right in the low 70s for the GPU sometimes even. That is crazy low. Now, I wonder what kind of performance you can get out of this if you didn't worry about the temperatures. Just push the temperatures up to like 90C. You could probably push this all the way up to 145 watts. I think it has something to do with the profile setting within the computer. If you guys know anything about that, please leave a comment down below how to change that. I also know it has something to do with the integrated GPU, so the integrated GPU, uh, somehow you have to bypass it to get the full performance out of your machine. I've never really understood how that works. There's a thing called like a MUX switch and you're supposed to somehow do something with it or you, you disable it or you enable it and it bypasses the GPU. So that's what needs to happen. But um, if you guys know how to do that, definitely leave a comment down below and just fill me in on how that works. Oh, Western Digital, cool. Let's take a look at the speeds. Okay, so after examining the back panel some more, I did notice that there is a brace that holds these screws together. You can kind of see it there. If you're right here, you can kind of see it, that little metal brace. And this one ended up failing, which is why it's all popped out like that. So the screw came out on that one just fine. I guess it failed, but the brace on this one stayed in place. Hence the screw is still there. So at least four of the screws do have braces. 
and then the rest do not. It's very, very odd. I guess the four screws are the main screws. And normally when you do this, it's probably best to unplug the battery because you could be shocked if you touch something improperly. Like I never unplug the battery because I don't really care. But even here it says, disconnect the battery before accessing any parts of the device. Now in terms of upgrades, you can upgrade the SSDs and you can also upgrade the RAM. On the M17 version, the previous version, not the X17, but the M17, the RAM was soldered in. I think maybe the storage was also soldered in. They only have two different screw types and the screws are clearly visible. And they're not some crazy screw that you need to have like pencil lobe or anything. This is something you can pretty much do at home. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so on some laptops, the screws actually don't come out. They stay attached to the back housing. Um, now on this one, it's a little odd because two of the screws stayed in and then one of them doesn't even unscrew. I think it's just a defect in the product. Um, this panel is slightly, the holes are slightly misaligned to the screw and the screws are just too cheap or something. It's something, it's something that stupid. I can't believe it has that, but I mean, especially on an expensive $2,500 machine like this, you would expect everything to be flawless, but it kind of isn't, which sort of sucks. But yeah, like this screw, especially like as I was unscrewing it, it lifted up. See, like there's like a little gap right there. It lifted itself up, but the screw did not come out, which I find that to be pretty annoying. So in the past, once you unscrewed the screws, it would just lift up, but the back panel is snapped into place. There's these little and the problem with these plastic holders, you can see one right there, is that they tend to break off when you remove the back panel. So it'll be interesting to see if they're broken now. Once you went around the perimeter and unsnapped everything, don't just lift it up because there's these teeth. You have to slide it out like that or you could risk damaging the little teeth right here. You see the little teeth, it slides in with those and if you just lift up like that it could just break them right off and here we are there it is very glad they brought back the upgradability and you have a quad fan setup that is truly something wow look at how awesome that is so to upgrade the ram it's pretty simple you have these little metal arms and all you do is you push away from them. So you grab them and you pull them like that. You pull them back. You do the same on this other side here. And then it'll just pop up diagonally. Some machines, it does not pop up diagonally. So you have to kind of lift it out diagonally and then you just pull it out. So huh, the arms are slightly different on this side. They have like a little plastic hinge. All right. Also, you gotta pay attention to the little notch. You see the notch in the center there? Well, it's not actually in the center. It's offset slightly. So don't insert like this on this side. You can do it on that side because that's how it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to go in like this. And then on this side, it's flipped. Just follow the notches and you should be okay. There. and then also pay attention to this little golden rim thing on the side you see that see the little the little lines there sometimes people have a tendency to insert halfway like this and then one of the sides will be popped out like that watch out for that insert it and then close and push down it will snap into place on its own you'll hear like a little crunching snap sound SSD, it's the exact same thing, except you have to unscrew the little screw. So right here we have our SSD. It looks like it has a little plastic protective cover on it. Let's take a look at it real quick. 
All right, let's go ahead and unscrew it. Don't forget to put this plastic cover back on because it's there because if it touches the back panel, which is metal, then it could actually conduct something and it could cause some problems. Looks like this just raises up. Oh, it also acts as a heat sink. There's a thermal pad here. Don't touch that, that stuff's toxic. And the tricky part with this is on some of them, they do lift up more so. And this one doesn't really lift up that much. You just kind of pull out like this, you kind of wiggle it a little bit even. Actually wiggling it might damage it. So try not to wiggle too much. But yeah, this one also has its own little notch. Um, and then insert it. Push it in. Oh, this doesn't seem to be going in. I guess I should probably place it down. There it goes. And then make sure that the hole here is not misaligned. Just kind of push it down and then align it. All right, let's put the heat sink back on. So I used to take apart all of my machines pretty much with a knife, but eventually I got a iFixit kit. And I like these kits because they have pretty much everything you'd want a kit to take apart a machine. You can take apart any type of tech, which is freaking awesome. And uh, no, they didn't They didn't sponsor this video. I just, I just think it's a really good kit and they, they have a really good business model. And then need probably this one right here. Oh yeah, they have like this magnetic system, which is pretty freaking awesome. And when you're taking your screws out, there's like a little management system where you can just place them down and it keeps them separate so you can remember where they go. Very awesome.